welcome back to my channel my name is Emily if this is your first time you're welcome and if you've been here before thank you very much for coming back today's video is a collaboration with Bemi Olatunji she's a medical laboratory scientist based in Nigeria in this video we talked about the HCPC registration what you need to get registered with the HCPC how to get jobs as biomedical scientists or medical laboratory scientists in the UK and some other topics in relation to being a biomedical scientist in the UK I hope you found this helpful please do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when I post new videos thank you very much once again and I'll see you in my next video Bye for now. Thank you so much uh, once again for joining us here on this channel. Um, yeah, I, will, I would like to meet you. I would like them also to meet you. Just tell us a brief um, introduction to yourself, a brief picture of yourself. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Emily. I'm a biomedical scientist and I reside in the UK. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I want to actually know because I don't know. Are you did you school in the UK? Are you from the UK? Are you from Africa? Did you migrate? I really don't know. So that's one thing I would like to would like to do. Okay, I'm actually from Nigeria, but I studied in the UK. Okay. So I had BSc and MSc from the UK. Okay, okay. So you're from Nigeria, you look you schooled there and then you stayed back there to work. Okay. All right. So um um, I know that we biomedical scientists, okay, med lab scientists, that's what we are called here in Nigeria, but it's called um, biomedical science, biomedical scientists over there in the UK. That's something I've observed. And um, going through Google, I saw that you have to register with HCPC. So can you just tell us more about HCPC and then is it for just only biomedical scientists? All right, HCPC actually stands for Health and Care Professions Council. And that is just for people working in, in health and care professions. It's not just for biomedical scientists. If you're a clinical scientist, radiographer, uh, it actually reg regulates 15 professions. Mm -hmm. So it's not ju just biomedical scientists. If you are a clinical scientist, a radiographer, paramedic, and- Okay, I will try to uh, write those 15 other professions. But um, you said clinical scientist. So what's the difference between a clinical scientist and a biomedical scientist? Uh, clinical scientist is like a progression from biomedical scientist. So for you to be a clinical scientist, you need to have like, a degree like in biomedical science then you now progress to study uh, three years to become a clinical scientist so clinical scientists differ from biomedical scientists in the fact that uh, clinical scientists can report so if the biomedical scientists perform a test the clinical scientists can actually report this um laboratory test like a doctor would or a consultant would but okay, you need so, to go for okay so basically after your biomedical your bsc you now go for another yes. training for three years? Yes, Okay. three so, years. Okay. What is the name to of it? Is I'm science more science about it. I've not really heard it, so I was kind of shocked. Okay, so okay. the HCPC is not just for biomedical sciences. Now, um, we need to get registered. Um, if we want to move into the UK as to come and work as biomedical scientists, we need to get registered on the HCPC. Like it's a license. So we need to get the license. So can you just briefly just tell us a bit about the license? How can we um, register the website and stuff like that? So to get registered with the HCPC, you actually have to meet some standards. So they've got about four standards. So the standard of education and training of ethics and performance, then of like continual professional development. So you need to meet all these standards. That is when you'll be able to apply. So it's best for you to actually, first of all, contact them, look through all the standards to make sure that you meet the standards before you put in your application. So for you to put in your application as a UK um, pathway is different from international pathway. Yeah, well, so for international. international pathway, you have to have a, uh, a degree that the HCPC would accept. Okay. 
then you need to uh, recognize, and then you need to have like professional training. So you need to have like laboratory training, or sh you should have done a bit of um, laboratory work in your country before you can apply. So it's basically gathering all your evidences, all your uh, training, all the professional training, all the courses you've been to, and just um, like have a chronological detail of everything you've done then you can put in your application and it comes with a scrutiny fee after that they will not be allowed to register so it, it's it's just meeting the standards then putting in your application then when you get your application assessed then you can actually they can now look into your application fully because there's a board of committee that will actually come together and look through all your details to make sure that you actually meet all these standards before you can be allowed to register. Okay, so um, basically you're saying, first of all, you at least you need to get that degree from your home country, work for a yes. period of maybe a year or two, then yes. start up the application. Yes, so basically those are the two major things, your professional experience working in the lab, then your degree, then there's ethics and conduct, which is usually just like um, something that somebody saying, uh, say, so somebody just saying you have good standard, you have good behavior, more like a reference, but it's the training and the um, laboratory experience that are the major factors okay. in registry. So what's the website for this um, HCPC? Maybe it's like www.hcpc.uk.org. Yes, yeah, something like that. Yes. Yeah, I would, I would also check check out the website. As, as soon as you just Google HCPC, it will come up with the website. Yeah, so you get that because I've, I've, I've gone through the website before and I saw that there is a form. So basically, you would have to download the form, fill the form, send the other documents that are needed, right? So um, there's something I want to ask. Some people say you need the English exam. Some people say you don't need it. Some people say that um, um, as far as you can prove that you were taught in English in your own, um, con in your own school, you don't need to write the IELTS or the TOEFL. So um, that's another thing. So now, after you've downloaded the, because I've also gone through it and I've, I've kind of understood it, when you download, the form from the website, you have to put in some contacts, like the contact of people you've worked with, right? Like their email address and stuff like that. Okay. So now how do you send this document? Because I can find out that it's not an online document that you will send it online. You have to send it, right? You have to print, print out the form, fill it. So how do you get to send the documents to them in the UK? On the full page of the form, there's actually a registration department and the address is written there. So all you have to do is just gather your documents and send it by post, uh, by registered post so that you can be sure that the application pack has been received. So it's not online, it has to be by post. Okay, like for instance, DHL, that's what is very popular here in Nigeria. Yes. Okay. So now when you submit all those things, they will now look through your form and all the um, evidences you've given. Then after that, they will now ask you for your screen TV. That's about 495 pounds, right? It's increased to like 539. Has okay. increased now. Yeah, on the 1st of July this year. So it's 539 pounds. So. Yes. So when you now pay that and then they go through all your documents and you'll find your goods, do you need to pay any other money? Yes, you will now need to pay the registration fee. So the scrutiny fee is just for them to look into you through your documents to make sure that you meet all the standards, then you can go on the register. So to go on the register, you need to pay uh, I think 98 pounds for a year, but the HCPC registration is like for two years. So that's like 196 24 pence. So that's how much you need to pay to be on the register for two years. So every two years you get to pay the same amount or if it's, there's an increase, then you just get like you um, get to pay that amount to remain on the register. Okay, like like to renew the, whatever, like it's like a license now. Yeah, so after the first two, before the first two year ends, they would send you a letter to let you know that you're, Lies the year your registration is running out. Maybe in six weeks' time, you need to pay this amount. Then you need to renew. Just you keep on renewing your registration. Okay. 
So um, in summary, um, she's just trying to say that um, what you're saying now is that when you work for a period of time, you go on the website, download the form, fill it like with your hands, right? Like with pen. You can fill it with pen. Okay. Yeah. Fill it. Black ink. Yeah, on that form, I'm going to link the, I'm going to write the name of the website so you could easily download the form. Then on that form, they'll ask you for your, some of your, um, your referees, like people you've worked under, you have to write their official address and also phone number, they might have to contact them. And then every other document, just make sure you fill the form and then your other documents that you need might include your current license, right? You need your license to practice in your country, part of the things needed. And there are some other things that are all listed out on the um, form, like it's all on the website, the other things you need. And then you send it by Korea to the UK, their office, their branch office, then the UK, you send it to them. And then when it gets to them, you have to pay a security fee so that they can go through it. And then after you pay that security fee, then you now pay to be on the register. It's a two year, this, um, it's a two year fee, which you will renew every two years. So now, um, basically, how long does it take for, do you know how long it takes to, um, from, to process being on the HCPC from the day your document arrives at their office? Like, how long? It should take uh, a period of 60 working days. So that's like um, 12 weeks, so like three months. So if your application is straightforward, if you have all your documents, if there's no need for them to come back to you and tell you that something is wrong with your paperwork, then it should take an average of 60 working days. Okay, so that means it's very important that when you want to send your documents, ensure that everything is complete so that they don't have to get back to you and have to pause, so that everything will just go on smooth. So be sure to look at the website very well and understand and digest it, okay? So um, the next thing I want to ask now is after you get the license, after you've been on the register, what else? How do you get the job? How do you get the job? So to get the job, you need to go on the NHS website, which is like National Health Service, is the main employer in the UK. Then you just look for biomedical sciences job. So, but before that, you have to have your HCPC sorted. So, and just go on NHS website. Then you can go on Indeed. That's another job. Um, well, job what site. Indeed.com. So you can also get biomedical sciences job from that. Okay, you said IBMS. Now the IBMS, does it concern with a foreign train or just for those who stood in the UK? There's a way the HCPC would look at your degree so that it could, I mean, kind of be equated to a degree or, yeah, to an IBMS level. It's not that, I mean, the standards are different, but there's a way they will make sure that everything that you've been taught in your degree would be similar to what you would have been taught if it was from the UK. Because there's some elements, like if you want to work in like blood sciences, there are some courses or some modules that you need to have done. And HCPC will have to look at this and see how you've met that requirements in your degree. Okay, so basically, we don't really have any personal business with the IBMS. It's the HCPC that's going to analyze our course. Yes. Okay, so we just need to be sure that we are on the register, we get the ATPC license, then we can now search for jobs. So now when you search for jobs, are, are we going to get to do like an interview? Like, are we going to be interviewed or once you apply, you get it? Yes, you're going to be interviewed. It's, it's a, you have to apply for the job, then if you're selected, you'll be called to uh, to be interviewed, so yeah, it's not it's automatic. Be, uh, like on Skype, or you have to go to the UK for the interview. Um, because of COVID, I don't know if uh, things have changed, but normally you would have to go to the um, because there's going to be a panel of uh, or that maybe senior members of the lab that would sit and ask you different questions, and sometimes you can be shown around the lab. So, but most times you need to come into the lab to get interviewed. Okay, so so that means you can't really relocate until you go go for your interview, get the job, then before you can now say finalize your relocation. 
it is it's the way it works is if you have the right to work in the UK, then you can come and mm -hmm. search for jobs. Like if you're married to someone that has the right to work and you can work based on that person's visa, then you can go through that process of coming, then getting interviewed, then before you come um, normally. But if you don't have the right to work, it's difficult for you to um, get the job because most of the jobs require you to have the right to work in the so that's like, oh, do you have the right? Because there are some questions that the NHS website might ask you, like, do you have the right to work in the UK? Do you meet all the required qualifications even before you get to fill the application form? So if you, it depends on the right to work or the type of visa you've got in the UK. Okay. Um, I want to also ask this thing, like, do we get to have funded visas, like where the employer is going to sponsor the visa and the tickets because I think they do that for um, nurses and doctors. They get to sponsor you. So is it also applicable to us regular scientists? Um, it depends on the employer. There's some there's some employers that would offer a tier two sponsorship. It's like a certificate of sponsorship that you, you would they would apply. Uh, on your behalf, then you would work with the employer. But there's some jobs that actually want someone that is ready to go. So it depends on your employer. It is not very common, like nurses, because the demand for nurses and doctors is quite high. So they would do anything they can to bring people over. But for biomedical sciences, it's not that like high demand. Yeah, there's still a need for them, but they would not as the nurses not, and the doctors. Yes, not as the, as the nurses. So on so the jobs, depends. on the job advert, it just depends. So on the job advert, if someone is willing to sponsor you, they will write it like at the notes under the job that there's tier two sponsorship available. But if it's not, there is likely that they want someone that can come in and work straight. So the next question is that do we biomedical scientists over there, do they run calls like do overnight, run on calls? or is just uh, morning duty only? Uh, it depends on your specialty. So if you are in a lab that works 24 hours, so if you are in like um, biochemistry or hematology, transmission science, those are the disciplines that they need people to work 24 hours, then you will need to be on call, you will need to do some nights and weekends. But if you are in like um, pathology, which is just like nine to five role, then yeah. you don't, you don't, do on calls or what about microbiology? Night. Microbiology, yeah, you need to do same do on calls. Well, it's and, basically the same thing in Nigeria too. The histopathologists don't do on calls, but the other three they do on calls. Then okay. I also want to ask if we could. Is it only in hospitals that we could get jobs? The jobs are they just for hospitals, or there are also some maybe industries or some facilities where we could work as biomedical scientists. It's not, you can work in various settings. You can work in like pharmaceutical labs, in research labs, in, in the industry. You can also work in like um, forensics lab, yeah, like okay. in the lab where they're doing a forensic test. Okay. So it's not just, it's not just, um, it's not just the NHS or it's not just the hospital. And there are also private labs that are run tests and it by medical sciences. So, okay. Yeah. Um, so I do not actually know that you schooled in the UK. So um, so for people who schooled in the UK, how do you get to stay back? You know, most of because I think, I feel like um, people usually say, um, if you go to school in the UK, I think so most of them usually come back after they are done with school. So, how can you stay back and get a job there in the UK? Okay, uh, there was something called like post study visa at the um, some years back. Okay. So that's what allows most people to stay, stay. So you get a two year visa where you can work. And um, after that, if you get an employer that can sponsor you, then you get to stay after some few years. For a while, the UK took away that post study. Uh, visa. So most people that came to study, they had to leave. But now they're bringing it back. So I think from um, next year or this year, July, you can, if you come here to study, you get the two years where you can work. And if you're lucky, that's why it's good that wherever you get to work, you prove yourself 
and the employers can say, oh, we really like this person. We wouldn't mind going through the stress of the certificate of sponsorship. So if they are able to do that, then you can get to stay. And after, I think, five years, you can apply for your indefinite leave to remain. And after a year, you can uh, apply for your citizenship. So. Okay, all right. Yes, I did ask about the pay. How is the pay like? How is the pay like? Um, pay is, is good. It, it depends on your experience. So if you're just coming out of the uni and you, you've not done your training, the amount you will get will not be um, equal to the person that has actually done their training. So after a year, you get an increase. So I think at the start, I'm not quite sure of this, so we might need to check the NHS website, but at least maybe if you start, you get like maybe 20,000. Then after every year, you get like, I think like a thousand more. So the more years you spend, the more um, amount you get, then you get more holidays after like every five years, you get um, some more holidays and stuff. So the more you're in the NHS, the more, um, experience you've got, then the more you're paid for your experience. Okay, so um, basically, as a biomedical scientist, I'm going to be able to live a comfortable life, like have a house, have a car, be able to afford one or two things, send money back home. Yes, um, that is dependent on how prudent you are. So if you work in somewhere that is quite expensive like London. Actually, if you live in London, there's a allowance that they pay you a bit more to compensate for the high uh, um, standard of living. So if you live in London or somewhere close to London, your cost of living would be high. But if you live like in Scotland or in Wales or somewhere that the rent is not high, things are affordable, then you get to save more. So it depends on your outgoings and it depends on, because you would, the NHS pays everybody the same. So except London, we, they get some allowance. So if you get the same amount, let's say 20,000, and you live somewhere that every month you have to pay like a thousand for your rent, then at the end of the day, you won't be left with much. But if you are someone that lives somewhere that you pay half of that for your rent, then you will be able to save money. So it depends on how much you have to spend on all your expenses. But if you're very prudent, and if you make wise decisions, you should be able to have enough to live on. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything you want to tell us? Anything that maybe I didn't think about that you want to say? I think uh, you, we've covered everything, but the other thing outside ETPC registration is something called continual professional development. So it's not just done and dusted. Once you register, that is it. You need to get to do some courses. You need to continue your professional development because you can be called upon. So I think every year or every two years, they would check the register and they would just pick some people. And when you're called upon, you need to have like a portfolio of everything you've done for the last two years. So that's another thing to okay, keep like in mind. You need to take a course. Is it a course? The no, it's not a course. It's just like, um, it's not like a standard course. But what I meant by a course is maybe there's a day course on a topic or a two day course on something. So it's more like short courses or seminars or lectures, yeah, things know. like that, like reflective learning that okay. you need to constantly and show that. Just, yeah. So even if you're registered, you still need to keep mm -hmm. on, on learning and stuff like that. So yeah, that's another thing to yeah. take note yes yeah, so. thank you so much i think much. that's everything thank, thank you so much for having me for your time i really appreciate it all right Yo. bye all right thank you much bye bye